everybody. My name is Miguel Myers. Welcome to My Horror Confessional, where every week I will have a guest come on and talk about one classic horror movie that they haven't seen and why. We'll discuss the movie, the actors, and probably get off topic quite a bit. Once I believe that they have properly atoned, I will absolve them of their horror movie sin. Today, we're talking to a good friend of mine, Andrew Hilbert, author of Death Thing, Bang Face in the Glory Hole, and Invasion of the Weirdos. Andrew, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. I, I love the pause. It wasn't awkward at all. Yeah, well, it's, um, my goal is for you never to release this. Uh, well, I have no shame with I have no reason not to. It's you. You're the one who's out in the public. I. Well, you have an Instagram account. That is true. Yeah. Um, so, Andrew... What is your history with horror? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Did you grow up watching it? Did you get into it later in life? Mm, I think um, as a child, I was always interested in the uh, weird, dark stuff. Um, the, the the scariest memory I have as a child is uh, my mom gave me a, uh, you know, one of those 3D eye, 3D, what do they call it, magic eye things? Yeah. Well, back in those days, they had fax machines, and like chain emails, there's chain faxes, and one of the things was like, stare at this and see how you'll end your life, and then you stared at it, and it was a picture of Jesus. Of course. And it scared the shit out of me. Wait, so does that mean that Jesus will end your life? <laughs> yeah, dude, he wrecks it. Is that a it. threat? I don't know. It was something weird. I was a very little kid. Wow, that is that is really creepy. Yeah, and, and my uncle... So my, 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 my mom's parents have a bunch of like iconography around their house because they're real Roman Catholic. <clears throat> and I remember, you know, there's a picture of Jesus, his hands bleeding and stuff. And my uncle's like, if you cuss, Jesus is going to cut your tongue in half. It's all this shit, all this like shit when I was a little kid uh, disturbed me and scared me, but it was also like very fascinating, right? Oh, yeah. So did, did that uh, correspond to you watching – horror movies or, or um, reading horror, you know, novels or, or books, goosebumps or anything like that. Yeah. Movies for sure. Uh, my cousins were, were older and they always were allowed to watch movies that I wasn't allowed to watch, but of course I watched them with them. Uh, you know, uh, Freddy Krueger was one of my favorite kind of scary things because it, you know, it was like the dream world aspect. Yeah. And I've always kind of, so you probably I probably told you this story like four times. Well, we're gonna pretend that I don't know you at all. <clears throat> okay, just don't. Even though this will be the fifth time I've heard this story. But, really? But my t no. Tell me what it is. You tell you me. Have, story. You have night night terrors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. That's why I like Freddy Krueger. So you know, it's just like a fascinating thing. Any, anything that was like, uh, anything that's like uh, forbidden, right? You tell you don't do this. Yeah, um, I'm like a moth to a flame, man. That's that's what I want to do. Okay, that's so why that I stormed the Capitol. Yeah, <laughs> that explains that shirt. Okay, so um, so you have this history with horror, and you you were into uh, Freddy. What did what do you think is your favorite horror movie? Any yeah. genre, or any <clears throat> decade, number one for you. Number one, like on a on a just like a on a fan level, I think. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is my favorite horror movie okay. because there's like not it's like pure like terror and chaos um, and it's almost like slapstick humor right in Texas Chainsaw Massacre I, okay I've heard that I've heard even Toby Hooper say that it's supposed yeah. to be like a comedy like a, a dark comedy I don't see that oh man I where I, is I, the humor in it that, you, that you're seeing I, it, I, it, it's really weird. When people it's like it. a cartoon. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> like that's that's like ninety percent of the dialogue in the movie. But it's like it's visceral. You and, see the and, guy. <clears throat> it's like, it 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 is really like a Looney Tunes uh, cartoon. You know. Well, see, it, I grew up in Chicago in the city, so any redneck, any hick stuff terrifies me. So growing up watching uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it. There was no room for humor. This was what was happening in Texas. 
And and then I went ahead and moved to Texas. Yeah. Like an idiot. Well, well I just I mean, I think it is. So the thing about horror that really I really like is how well it weaves itself with humor. You know, there's something, you know, I'm sure when you're in Chicago, Robin Banks and <laughs> watching the Bulls win <laughs> rings, yeah, them. you know, beating Utah Jazz fans up. <laughs> um, I'm sure after you escape the police or, or escaped a certain death, uh, you and the boys cracked up a cold one and laughed about it. Ha ha ha. I can't believe we escaped it. You know what I mean? It's one of those things that horror, like death, is like the ultimate absurdity. And that's what it was like. Very. There's humor in these things. I have to rewatch it with that eye. With with that in my mind, because yeah. I, I don't see it. But I, I have heard people people say that as well. When was the last time you saw it? Oh, it's probably been five, six years. It's been a while. It's not yeah. my. It's a great movie. I love it. It's just not one of my go to. I, I actually don't repeat watch a lot of movies horror movies yeah. or any movies in general i'll watch it once or twice and then i move on because i'm a collector of everything including movies and experiences so i want to move on to the next thing the one uh exception I, of course is is halloween. halloween yeah i know which is my favorite movie i watch it at least a couple times a year and i watch it definitely every year in halloween yeah um so yeah um so the movie that you um confessed to not having ever watched and that we're going to talk about today is Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1992. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, forgive direct- me, father, I have sinned. <laughs> directed by Francis Ford Coppola. And I'm glad you said that, Andrew, because that that is actually part one of the confession is the mm-hmm. contrition. Yeah. So are you sorry about it? You know, I think if I had seen that movie when it came out, I would have been in, I would have I would have still been grounded <laughs> at the boner that would have peeked out of my pantaloons. It's very central movie. Very central. It's, I don't know how. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably the horniest movie I've ever watched with my mom. My parents are in town. Okay. And <laughs> okay, so are they in the we, back? We put they're Polly here. to bed. Yeah, they're, my dad's in the hallway just listening. Uh, we put Polly to bed, right? And I'm like, I got to watch it. I know this is a long movie. I got to watch it because I'm scheduled to go with Miguel, and I know he's going to... I know he has a bet, thinking I'm not going to make this fucking recording, so I have to watch it. So I start watching it, and my mom comes in the room, and she's watching it, and the amount of moaning in this movie <laughs> is unsettling. This is already, even if this episode never gets released, it's already worth it just for that. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm doing the little kid thing where it's just like I'm twiddling my thumbs while my mom's like, I don't know what sex is. <laughs> You're like, oh, what? This is so weird. I I was I didn't know this was happening. Calling it sex though is 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 something because it was ninety nine point nine percent rape. Well, yeah, in both instances, and and we we can get to that. But so I I want to make this clear though, Andrew. In order to proceed with your confession, with your I need you to be contrite. So you are you are sorry. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I have. You won't do it again. Well, I mean, there's a whole list of movies. Okay, you won't do it again. Good, great. No, but see, so here's professional... Father, Father, you are a man of God. You know theology. No, I, I will not. never be perfect. I will never live up to yes, Christ, Christ's love. So yeah. there's plenty of flaws for me to have. I'm sure you'll you'll have me on this for fucking five oh, more you're times. Be coming on. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I just want to make this clear. I am an atheist. This is just a format. So why why am I here? Um, it's your mustache. So, uh-huh. so all right. So you are contrite. Excellent. You have confessed that you, you have never seen Bram Stoker's Dracula. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you ended up watching it for this uh, episode, and I appreciate that. What did you think of the movie? I, if I gotta be honest, I kind of fucking loved it. It's an amazing movie, isn't it? There's so much good with it. It's just like the costumes, the set pieces. The the shadow thing that they did, the lighting, the lighting, uh, <laughs> it was really the, really good. The, I I loved uh, Dracula's armor too when he was coming back from the Crusades. That the weird red, like latex red thing, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, the costume design by Aiko Ishioka, and she did an amazing job in that. And she actually did um, the cell. Oh yeah, you know, uh, 
I have seen that movie. Yeah. But that came out like 98 or 99, right? It so came out in like, 2000. Oh, 2000. Yeah. And then the, she also did The Fall, which is great. You know, she was a costume designer for The Fall as well. Have you ever seen The Fall? No. Um, that's... Forgive me, Father, for I've seen it. <laughs> Yo, come on. Although that's more fantasy, not really horror. But yeah, yeah. She, she did that one as well. And, and it, was, it was really great. So you, going back a little bit. That opening scene with the shadows. Oh my the, god! I love that. That before I watched, I so I watched this in the theaters when it came out, and then I didn't watch it for years and years, and I just completely forgot about it. And that's what I feel like people don't really give this movie the credit that is due. Um, but when I saw it again at Terror Tuesdays here in Austin a couple years ago, I was like, "Holy shit!" That's what I remembered of this movie was the beginning. Yeah. Um. And I, I kind of wish that the movie was just that, you know, it was so well done. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the weird thing about this movie, it felt like eight different movies kind of smashed into one, like the visual style changed so yeah. dramatically from the first 15 minutes to the rest of the movie, but also like the feverish nature of a lot of it. It was just like, wow. You know, I mean, it was, it was obviously like, an artistic movie, but it was built for like a, you know, a nineties Hollywood blockbuster system. And this movie was never going to be a blockbuster. It's like, I mean, this movie was, was too horny. <laughs> you know? it was, yeah. It was too horny. What, um, um, what I liked about this movie was that they did 99% of the effects practically like, Within camera, you know, they would reverse the film and, and record over it again. There was no CGI, uh, and th- that was kind of groundbreaking. Well, not groundbreaking, but very different at the time because everybody was going towards CGI and, yeah. and, and special effects sort of that way. They were doing all their stuff the way that it was done at the turn of the century, 1900s. Um, and that's around the time that the the book came out, you know, Dracula, Bram Stoker's yeah. Dracula came out. So it felt even they used a a camera of the time of the 1900s in one scene when Dracula gets to London. Yeah. Do you remember that? It looked very weird. It looked like really stilty and slow. It looked like that was actually they used uh, an old camera from that time to record that. I just thought that was kind of cool. I mean, I I, I love I I love that. I feel like, uh, you know, it's weird watching. It's obvious that an artist is doing a lot of things. You know, he has the money to do everything he wants to do. You know what I mean? And that's what I kind of appreciate about this movie. It was like, uh, I, I didn't know, I didn't know that. You know, I, I thought maybe there's some kind of After Effects, some editing trick to make to create that. But knowing that they used an actual camera of the time from when the book was, well, maybe when Nosferatu or whatever came out. Uh, that is really interesting to me. I mean, I, I, I like artistic reaches. You know what I mean? It's like when when an artist reaches and fails or comes up just a little bit short, that's like my that's usually my favorite work of theirs. Yeah. So and, and this feels like a reach. You know, now we can look back and say, oh, this movie's really good. But I feel like at the time, it to everybody, it felt like a reach and a fail. Yeah. Um. um so it, just to back up a little bit, I'm sure everybody knows, um, you know, the story of Dracula, and this was one of the most accurate portrayals of the novel that that's been, you know, yeah. turned into a movie. Cause a lot of times you'll get like, you know, the, when they first started making like Nosferatu, they couldn't get the, the rights from Bram Stoker's uh, family or his estate, you know, but now Dracula is, you know, what is it? Public, public property, a public, public domain. Yeah, yeah. Public domain. So uh, anybody can make whatever, but, um, I, I really liked uh, that they were pretty. They stuck pretty close to the um, to the book, and so let, let me hear your rundown. In my rundown, I think somewhere in the 1400s, right? Must have been during the Crusades or something, you know. Dracula was a warrior for God, going out killing heretics, and he goes out, and he's killing heretics, and uh, when he comes back. <clears throat> 
I don't know what his wife's name is back in back in the 1400s, but Winona Ryder's character Elizabetta. Elizabetta. Elizabetta finds Elizabetta wet and bleeding and dead with a suicide note because she believed him to be dead. He was never coming back. So she jumped out of his she jumped out of a a window into the river and uh and so he gets so fucking pissed at God. I fucking killed all these goddamn you know offensive terms uh for you God and you let my woman kill herself. So he takes his fucking sword. This was one of the coolest scenes in the whole fucking movie too. Takes a sword and like pff, right through that like iron cross and it's bleeding and like a maniac. This is what was so cool about it. You were watching Gary Oldman go fucking nuts. And the thing is, that is what it looks like when someone goes nuts. <laughs> like a break from reality, a fucking psychosis. <laughs> and he's like drinking the blood. And he's like killing all these priests. It was a met. That was like, wow, that was worth, worth the cost of admission right there. You know. Yeah, that the, I think this is where Gary Oldman starts making like his real his name in in movies because yeah. this performance <clears throat> was was great and it was helped by by the score. Yeah, right. The score was I, I'm gonna try to say this guy's name, but uh, Wojciech Kilar. He's Polish uh, film music composer. I'm sorry if I butchered that, yeah. um, but I actually fell in love with the score watching the movie and then I went on Spotify and looked it up and was just listening to it. Nice. Cuz it's great. It's a, just a, a great score. There is one song on there that's kind of annoying. It's what it's is the it? end. It's the ending it's credits one. Why did they put it in? There? <laughs> just for random yeah. stuff. Yeah. No, they had um Annie Lennox or is that is that somebody? Yeah. Yeah, that's somebody. <laughs> um she she had the the song over the credits, Love Song for a Vampire. Oh yeah, I, 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 I'm. Is this like bad to admit? But I only watch the credits when I get a special thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or, or if there's like a Marvel cutscene at the end or in the middle. No, nah, I, I mean, I was like, ah, I'll see that on the internet. Yeah. But yeah, that score is, is amazing. Uh, it, I put it up there with, you know, I don't know what else he's done, but it's, it's, it's like a Carpenter score. You yeah. Know, I, Obviously not synth, but right, right, it was quality. atmospheric. Okay, so he he uh, she kills herself, right? right? And he kills everybody, including God. Yeah, well, he renounces his faith, right. which is a okay with me. I don't have a problem with it. And so he 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 gets out of God's love. He's he's away from God's love. Now he's undead. He's a vampire, and he has to survive off the off the blood of the living. So from the 1400s, we cut to the 1800s, I guess. Dracula, real estate guy, just like all bloodsuckers. Exactly. Uh, you know, he's having Keanu Reeves, the worst actor in the Western Hemisphere, uh, to go help, help him buy some land in London. Very specific houses, which I don't really remember them kind of explaining why these houses. But they never... Was, yeah, there's some... Plot points that I did not get. Yeah. But it had something to do with chance and like meeting, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. Well, anyways, I guess I think his name is Harker. In the, is it Harker? The the, the, the lawyer? Keanu Jonathan Reeves Harker? Yeah. He's, uh, you know. He's oh, can, I in, can I interrupt you real quick just to Please run do. down this cast? Yeah. So we got Gary Oldman, Winona Legend. Ryder, Keanu Reeves, Anthony Hopkins, Carrie Ellis, um Wait, the guy from Princess Bride. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean he's he's a dreamboat. Dude. Why didn't they why why wasn't he Keanu's character? That's why wasn't question. he Dracula? No, <laughs> Gary Oldman was Dracula for sure. Yeah. Oh, I meant to say I have to think about this because vampires are my number one genre. Um, but I think Gary Oldman in this movie for me is the definitive Dracula. Well, I think he's probably the most He's I, I I feel I, like and I know people are like Bella Lugosi or I, I get it but for me okay. Bella Lugosi of course that's like the that the universal Dracula costume is Bella Lugosi hands down Bram Stoker's Dracula 
is, I think, the scariest representation of Dracula, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Um, all right, so yeah, uh, Carrie Elwes, and then Tom Waits. Oh, Tom Waits is a is a guy who's going nuts, right? He's Renfield. Yeah, I was trying. To, I was like, why do I recognize this motherfucker? Yeah, so. Yeah. So that I just I mean I feel like this cast is stacked. It's so it's, good. And then and then directed by Francis Ford Coppola who you know who did uh Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now which I've never seen. Oh my uh, god. Obviously, Forgive obviously, you father for you have seen. <laughs> I'm a whore dude. I I I'm a whore. But I have seen Godfather and then he did The Conversation um which I have never seen either. But that I know that one's the Gene Hackman though. That one's supposed to be excellent as well. Have you seen that one? No. Um, and then he kind of, <laughs> I, I, I like this. We, we should keep this going. But he's <laughs> kind of slowed down. He, he hasn't, he's done some movies. He did Jack, but, you know, whatever. Well, you know, he's done Jack shit. But he, I'm surprised that he hasn't dipped back into horror again. Because I, I just think he did such a great job with it. And he hasn't, hasn't gone back to it. It's kind of, kind of a shame. But it's like real specific. This is like period piece kind of. You know, this feel, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because I was watching the um, the special features, and he was saying that he took the opportunity to direct this because um, Dracula was the scariest thing to him growing up. Yeah. You know, watching those old movies with his with, with his family. So he's like, yeah, I want to make this movie, but I don't think he's necessarily wanted to be a horror director. Yeah. The concept of, dra- of, of like a vampire is very, is, is very terrifying. So anyways... He buys homes in London. He, Keanu Reeves, guess what? You ain't ever leaving this fucking dungeon. You are gonna get raped by banshees. <laughs> and like, he's 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 just in this basement. But he's still able. He's not like chained up or anything. He's still able to sneak around. He sees where Dracula sleeps. He sees that Dracula's being put into a fucking box and getting onto a ship. So whatever. He has some freedom of movement, but he cannot leave the dungeon. Anyways, Dracula goes to uh, London and he happens upon Mina, who he's intending to happen upon. Because right? he saw Jonathan Harker, Harper's whatever. He saw his, his, his pendant, his, his fiance's beautiful yeah. face. I know no writer in there. So he goes to London and uh, does the whole nice guy bit. You know, excuse me, <laughs> where is this place? Where's the theater? Okay, but those sunglasses? Killer. I wanted those sunglasses when I was 10 years old. Dude. Because this came out in, yeah, 92. I was 10 years old. I wanted a pair of those sunglasses so Dr- bad. Dracula was a weeaboo before there were weeaboos. <laughs> he he dressed like a, you know, he dressed like a, like what, what a weeaboo sees in anime. I, I don't know. I don't know what this stuff is. I don't know what it means, but it, it sounds accurate to me. Yeah, it's accurate. I, I wanted to back up just a second to the, um, the scene where he is being raped right and and dracula walks in on them uh-huh. and all the and all the girls his his uh concubines or whatever they break apart and there's one where they're like fully connected well yeah, they're scissoring <laughs> I, I hey i walked you up to it yeah, and then, yeah. I, hey man i'm i'm you know it was weird you gotta get an assist there's you know? there's so many visuals that, in this in this movie that just throw you off you know like for there, there's one where, where where keanu's escaping you're going to be talking about it and he's it looks to us like he's crawling across a wall and then he gets to a point and he falls down sideways yeah where like gravity doesn't work the way it's supposed yeah. to work around you know so and, and your first clue to that is when he's down in the basement or the dungeon or whatever you can see that it was a camera trick of course but like you see the the rats and they're climbing upside down on yeah. the thing uh, above the screen i was that was a cool visual so <laughs> let me nerd out for a second that that's one of the visuals i was telling you about where they filmed first rats walking normally across it then they took that film <clears throat> flipped it upside down put it back in the camera and then filmed the other part and then filmed the other part yeah and then that just cool. spliced those two together and that's old school filmmaking you know and what's crazy about that was <clears throat> if it was cgi'd You'd be able to tell a little bit of like, oh, that doesn't look that doesn't look natural or whatever. Yeah. Maybe not today, but but back then, yeah. back then it'd be like, oh, that looks fucking weird. It looked pretty normal. Yeah, you know, it was a good trick. 
so he uh, so he escapes eventually, yeah. but Dracula is already gone. And he, he meets uh, Mina. Mina, and she's just like, "Get away from me, you gross, you gross Romanian." He's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I just was trying to go to the theater and watch some titty flicks." She's like, "You want to get culture? Why don't you go to a museum or a library?" And he's like, "Nah, I'm sorry, lady. I really want to see some titty flicks, and I want to see them with you." So with what the did worst you think accent. of her accent? It wasn't. It, hers wasn't as bad as Keanu. Hers wasn't as bad because she wasn't trying as hard. It, you know, she just sounded like, you know, some American. Yeah. At times you could hear she tried to do the whole, Wolfta, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't as bad. Keanu Reeves was just god awful. And the weirdest part was the guy who played the American, like the cowboy motherfucker. Yeah. What the fuck was wrong with his accent? Did they get a British guy to play an American? Like did they just switch everything? Here's my problem with these movies. Why does anybody need to put on an accent? Okay, it takes place in Transylvania. It takes place in Great Britain. Okay, whatever. Then then have some British actors. Don't make Keanu Reeves do an accent, you know? Well, like Don't. when a British person comes to America to act, majority of the time they just use the British accent. Oh, yeah, they're the British person. Yeah. So, yeah. We just should have let Keanu do his surfer accent. Basically. I just feel like it should have, you know, they shouldn't even mess with it. It takes me out of the movie when it's so bad. Um, but be that as it may, they they did accents. They were all fucking terrible. Um, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, so anyways, they go see a titty flick and Dracula sexually assaults Winona Ryder. Definitely does, yeah. D- Dracula is like the biggest sexual assaulter in like cinema history. Yeah, he's just he is just he's a rapist. Yeah. Sure. But you know he's he fancies himself a nice guy. He killed a bunch of people for God. You know he deserves this. <laughs> uh, the opinions uh, expressed by Andrew Hilbert are not necessarily opinions. No, no, I, 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 I was I was expressing the opinions of Dra- his internal monologue. Okay, next. I'm, here, here's the big synopsis. Blah, 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 blah. Winona Ryder's character falls in love with Dracula. Her friend gets raped by a werewolf. Hold on, no, no, yeah. hold on, hold on. Okay. Her friend, this is a weird thing about the whole movie, the morality stuff. Her friend is a sex maniac before, before mm-hmm. the werewolf destroys her. Are you asking or tell him? I'm asking. I, I I think it's more of a cheeky, like, oh, women are so repressed in this age that if she were to talk about what was it, doggy style in that in that uh, picture, or the book that they saw, yeah, that it's like very cheeky and like, oh, that's so you know, inappropriate. Yeah. I don't think she was actually doing anything. It's like a, I don't know, somebody who's always talking about sex but is still a virgin sort of thing. Right. Okay. I don't know if she's a virgin, but I, I'm just saying I don't think she was a. How did you put it? Sex crazed. Uh, maniac? S- sex maniac. I mean, do a good. Some sort Dracula, of sex pervert. Dracula is also a sex crazed maniac. This is not gendered language. It's just Dracula's sex crazed maniac. Lucy's a sex crazed maniac, and Lucy is in some kind of trance at night. Walks into this, you know, creepy garden. And um, gets raped by a werewolf that escaped from a zoo. You find out the wolf escaped from the zoo through a newspaper clipping in the next scene because it was the weirdest storm in history. Uh, also a, in a magazine. Yeah. Uh, they they, they the, weren't the giving were- a lot of credit to the to the audience there. <laughs> no, I know. The, and, and the werewolf was c- controlled by Dracula. Uh, so that's my, that, that was my question. One of the things is, did Dracula in, inhabit the body of that wolf and then turn it into a werewolf and then rape Lucy? Yeah, so Van Helsing you, Van Helsing explains this like in a couple sentences at, near the end of the movie, right? It's uh he can, you know, he can take over creatures, not necessarily humans, but he can take over creatures uh like inhabit their body mm-hmm. or control them. And he can appear as vapor or smoke and you know, there's a whole thing at the end of the movie. It's like, hey, lady, the safest place to be is uh, 
you know where Dracula's living. He's got an open window. I'm going to take you to my prison for psychopaths, and you're going to stay in this one room, the safest place for you to be, this one room with an open window, straight shot for Dracula. And Dracula's vapors comes in, and he rapes. I know a writer again. This movie's full of it. Yeah, a lot of moaning and groaning. Yeah. But she falls, I mean, she falls in love with Dracula, Stockholm Syndrome kind of thing. Um, so anyways, Dracula's going around. He's in love with Mina because Mina looks like his wife that killed herself. He steals Mina away. Harker's coming back. He's gray-haired and haggard. He's tired of he's tired of getting raped. <laughs> well, he, he <laughs> escaped. Terrible. He escaped and he made it to... Yeah, that's gonna be the, la- the we should have said trigger warnings. Yeah, that's gonna be the last time we're gonna see. You can read, you can redo your intro. I was saying, nah, this is gonna be a squeaky clean podcast. Yeah, you know, watch this movie filled with with, with rape. <laughs> um, so he he uh, Keanu Reeves' character escapes and he goes to a convent and they take care of him, and then he writes a letter to Mina in, for her to come uh, and they get married. Yeah, in, in Romania. In Romania, and which is funny. I'm sure everybody who's seen this movie is it's like the first trip bit of trivia. But um, I, I was reading on Internet Movie Database that they think that uh, because they had a real Greek Orthodox um, priest yeah. doing the marriage and during the scene, and so they think that Winona Ryder and Keanu Reeves were actually could possibly have been married during that scene. Oh, really? Yeah, and then they didn't worry about it, but Keanu says that every now and then he still gets texts from Winona saying, hi, husband, or something like that, you know, just just joking around. And he just blocks her. <laughs> He's like, Jesus Christ. I need a new number. How'd you get this number? So um, so they get married. Dracula finds out about it with this Dear John letter that Winona writes him. Yeah. Um, and that is one of the creepier scenes because Gary Oldman is Gary Oldman, uh, Gary, Gary Oldman, right? Gary Oldman. Yeah. Wow. I just said Gary Oldman. Old man. Yeah. Um, he is in this bat makeup, like a life size human bat. And he's just crying. Is it blood that he's crying? I forget. Initially, initially he's crying blood at the restaurant or wherever he's at. Yeah. But then he goes nuts again. Yeah. And then he goes, this is the weirdest part where after he finds out he's in a room by himself with just candles around him and then he just yells wins wins yeah. wins and you're like okay <laughs> yeah then there's another weird storm <laughs> yeah so then he decides to go back to um Romania or Transylvania yeah um but they so uh, um Lucy yeah. Ends up, oh man, the costume design for Lucy when she's when in when she resurrects when she resurrects that all white with the white face that is terrifying, dude. And then the kid crying, yeah, you know, that was a very spooky scene. Um, but there was a funny part, yeah, at the funeral. This was like the one joke in the movie, the one obviously written joke. Uh, Van Helsing's like, we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to take some stuff from the body. It's like, you want me to do a full autopsy? No, not a full autopsy. I just want you to cut out her heart and cut off her head. Yeah. It's just like lingers because played for laughs. Hopkins, it's a very funny joke. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins, like just uh, deadpan, you know, delivery oh, is great. great. But that scene is so it, – it's like nightmare fuel. Like even when um, like they – force her to go back with the cross and she's going into the um going back into her coffin it look it's re- it's a reverse shot so you yeah. can tell it's a reverse shot but it's so fucking creepy and that design is is just it's spectacular i love that part and then she spews blood at him yeah it was a, it was a glass casket too which was pretty fucking cool it, i, I want to be cremated but if i can't do that for whatever reason i want the glass casket well, cremate me and then put me into a Whataburger large size drink. Styrofoam. That way. Just start, it's bad just, for the environment. And just throw it in the landfill. So there's Andrew Hilbert. Have the rats drink me up. 
See, I'm surprised you own Whataburger and not McDonald's since you wrote like McDonald's trilogy. Well, I mean, listen, McDonald's is American culture. Whataburger is Texas culture. If okay. I write about McDonald's, everybody knows what McDonald's is. If I write about Whataburger, they say what? What? You got White Castle people, you got Whataburger people, you got Carl's Jr. people who are also Hardee's people in other parts of the country. But you don't have McDonald's is McDonald's. McDonald's and nowhere, is nowhere is there in and out people because those people are trash. You have in and out people. I'm an in and out person. <laughs> oh, I will. I, yeah, I will say though, Whataburger has got me. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Spicy. This, is, this has been your Texas minute. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a beautiful state. Uh, Lucy is killed. They, they they chop her head out because she's turned fully. Yep. And um, oh yeah, we also didn't mention that um, Van Helsing is introduced at this time, right? Because yeah. they couldn't figure out how to what was going on with Lucy. Yeah. And um, Van Helsing, played by old Tony Hopkins. Tony Anthony Hopkins. He's creepy in his own right. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I feel like the roles could have been reversed and it would have been as, as, just as good. If Anthony Hopkins was Dracula, it would have worked. And Gary Oldman was Va- Van Helsing, it would have worked. Yeah. In the way it is now, but Gary Oldman does such a good job. But I do think they would have both been perfect for either role. I mean, because Anthony Hopkins, Hopkins is coming off of Silence of the Lambs. Like, when did Silence of the Lambs come out? Was that I think 80? it was like ni- 91. Okay. Because I was wondering if there was any like callbacks to it. Um, but probably not. No, but so so he was creepy. Uh, it's just it's just a lot of creepy man vibes in this movie. Just creepy rape vibes. What was the commentary on this? You know, what, what were the? I mean, it was a pretty terrifying movie. Um, but I always feel like vamp, you know, vampires were more fleshly, more of the world sex stuff. You know. Yeah, I mean, if you you go into a vampire movie, you know you're gonna get some romance or some sexy stuff, you know. Yeah, but it's a it's more it's an intimate way of killing you. You know what I mean? I want to suck your blood. You gotta get close. You gotta get intimate with this person in order to bite them in the neck. Yeah. Yeah, vampires just they invade your space, man. <laughs> that whole. <laughs> it's a bat whole... virus. It's a bat virus. Oh shit! Vampires created coronavirus. That was COVID-92. <laughs> nice. So uh, one thing, um, that, speaking of sexuality or whatever, like Dracula bites Mina in the neck, right? Mm. And then he slices his chest right above the nipple, yeah. and she has to suck his blood. I, you could have chosen anywhere. Why has it got to be right above the nipple there? Why did he choose the dick? <laughs> nah. <laughs> anyway, why, did he just, why did he just circumcise a- himself real quick? Hey, he could have pricked his his finger, you know, his pointer finger. He's like, here. But no, it's got to be the nipple. Okay, here's my question. She's sucking away at his at his chest. He stops her and says, no, I love you too much to condemn you like this. She goes, no, no, I want it. You can see blood on her fucking teeth. You can see blood on her mouth. Yeah. She's already drank it. What what, what What's going on? And she, and she continues. So she's, she wants to be condemned to this madness. Okay. So... Dracula didn't stop her from doing anything. She was already sucking away. Yeah. Just, yeah. So, that, but she was under a stupor, like a hypnotic trance for him. You know, like I, you can't blame her. Just like you can't blame. No, Jonathan. I wasn't. No, no, I wasn't blaming her. I was saying it didn't. That part didn't make sense. Oh, like in the movies. Like, like uh, she had already. She had, was obviously yeah. already drinking the blood. I so feel, she was going to be condemned. I feel. Which you say, hey, real quick, stick your finger behind your throat and throw up. Yeah. That way you don't ingest my blood. I feel like there's like a, a, a not a filter, like a, um, a certain point. Like she, she's got to drink a hundred liters or what? That sounds yeah, like a so, lot. Yeah, so, so a hundred ounces. When you it, said it, finger prick, then it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So maybe she got to like 60 ounces or six ounces. But if he ounces. castrated himself, <laughs> it might have worked. Um, So, so the, this is uh, one of the my more favorite parts of the of the movie is now it's the race to Dracula's castle. That right? was really cool. Yeah, that whole and they had to they had to break up. They had to go one way because Dracula was reading her mind while he was still in the in his uh, uh crate on the ship. His dirt going crate. Back. Yeah. It's great. It's creepy as hell, man. 
The whole thing was great. I mean, yeah. that whole... And then once it really picks up, when they start chasing, when they see the the carriage, it becomes a different movie again. It's like a fever dream where it's like the, the camera, like kind of like the colors change a little bit. Yeah. And it kind of like goes in and out of focus, but it's just like, it's perfect. I want to know like what movies... Because, you know, a lot of like directors pay homage to like older movies, you know, and I feel like like a, a train robbery movie from the old West would have been something that they paid homage to in that, in that scene. But it was like, it, a, it felt unique, you know? So I, I don't know that I've ever seen something like that. So uh, in the commentary, uh, Coppola was talking a lot about uh, some of his, um, the movies that he, he looked back to when he was watching this movie or when he was making this movie. And one of them was beauty and the beast, but like the Cocteau version from like 43 or something like that. Mm like a really early black and white version of it because it had a lot of the imagery that he was looking for. And when he was, you know, creating the the storyboards for it, he went about it a, a really, really um, different kind of ways. He hired an illustrator and uh, illustrator worked with his um, production company or production team to create the whole movie and storyboards. And then they turned that into a book. Then they gave that to everybody and they just worked off of that. Huh. And, um, he, he also gave them lists of, um, artists, really weird artists that he liked, for example, like, uh, uh, Gustav Klimt, right. Uh, or who did the kiss? Uh, yeah. Klimt who did the kiss, right. Are you familiar with that drawing or with that painting? Here, let me look it, it up real quick. Yeah. I'm... It's, it's why you're looking it up. I'll just describe it. It's a very famous painting. Um, and in it, Oh yeah. yeah, that painting. Maybe with the right. Yeah. Does that does that man's what that man is wearing look familiar to you at all? Oh, it's one of Dracula's costumes. That's his last costume. What yeah. his last set? Uh, his last costume when he dies. Cool. You know. That is cool. Yeah. So and so he took a lot of um, inspiration from a lot of weird artists. You know, from from you know, previous time or whatever. So. I just think that was dope. So they, they finally get to his castle. Oh, but before that, uh, um, Van Helsing and uh, Mina are attacked by his uh, Dracula's uh, harem. Daughters of Dracula, I think is what they're yeah. calling on. That scene is terrifying in, in and of itself. It's very scary. And then he fucking chops off all their heads. He's like, oh, you want to fuck with me? After, <laughs> after he protected them with the ring of fire or whatever, he yeah. goes back and just kills them. He's like, Fuck, fuck me now, you know? That was yeah. so cool. That was cool. And it was surprisingly graphic, you know? Like, I didn't realize this, but beheadings and stuff is, like, pretty disgusting. Pretty pretty scary stuff. Yeah. So when he just, like, boom, and they just <laughs> come off, like, I don't know, like, I guess a head from a body. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, so there's it was that I, I had a visceral reaction to it. So there's that scene, and then they finally get to the uh, to the castle, and then he has his helpers are gypsies, and I feel like oh. nowadays, like we can't, you know, you don't say that word, but they said uh, it. In the yeah, movie. they said it. That's what they were they were called in the movie. Now yeah. would you, they would say Roma? Is that Roma, right? and, Roma and Sinti. And Sinti? I think they're two. Di- I think it's two different. Uh, okay. Two different. Yeah. Yeah, Roma and Sinti, and those are like. Those are two ethnic groups okay. that used to get lumped in as gypsies in, in, in Europe. Yeah. And so the uh, the Roma are the ones who are kind of helping Dracula. And um, so they get to the castle and the Texan dies right away. Yeah. Right? yeah. But not before he slashes him. Uh, does he slash him in the throat or somebody slashes him in the throat? I I, I, you know, I don't know who slashes him in the throat. That's a good question. Yeah. Was it the the doctor? That yeah, regardless, one of them. Yeah, one Dracula them. slashes gets slashed in the throat, then he gets stabbed in the heart. And these, uh, these guys, Dracula steals steals all of their ladies, <laughs> and they travel they travel the earth, burning it down to kill this motherfucker. They're like, oh, you're gonna cuck us? No, <laughs> dog. Yeah. yeah, here's a throat slit, the ultimate cuck. And um, oh, Andrew, do me a favor, don't ever say the word slit. Again, I uh, appreciate that. Why? Uh, so you don't like the word slit? No. So uh, it's like real moist. 
When so they, Dracula has a so uh, knife in his heart, and Andrew, Andrew, Hilby, <laughs> Hilby. That's good. We're right. almost done here, dog. We're almost done. No, here. What, keep what, it what, together. What, keep you it together. need to keep it together. You're, you're the one who's afraid of words. Cool, cool. Um, so <laughs> he gets. Uh, so Dracula is uh, slashed and thrown, and he gets uh, the knife in the heart, which it wasn't a wooden stake, right? So we're not, we're not. I think that the, part of mythology. Well, it, remember no, no, it was the Texans' big knife that Lucy wanted to hold earlier in the movie. Yeah, that's right. That's a good callback. But he, they, they didn't kill Lucy with a wooden stake. They killed her with something else. It wasn't a wooden stake, but there was a scene where 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 one of the guys was whittling a, a yeah. wooden stake, but it was a knife. Yeah. Um, so then they're, they're about to like gang up on him and kill him. But Mina comes out of nowhere or is like, Hey, you know, she's got her shotgun, right? Yeah. She's got the shotgun or something. And she's protecting Dracula, which at this point you're like, I thought, you know, we had hoped that she had, the, the curse had been broken, but it hadn't. And she's like, would you do the same to me? Which, yeah, well, I, I would. Dude, she was playing with his heart, man. She's like, hey, I'm in love with Dracula now, okay? Yeah. I'm going to go back inside his home. My husband, listen, husband, I'm going to go back inside his home away from your eyes uh, and save him. Yeah. Poor guy. Which, yeah, which is really weird because I'm not quite sure what the turn is here. It's a very abrupt turn. Where they want you to have pity for Dracula. I think it's like like the love story, right? I mean, they're trying to build this like, oh, this is a multi fucking deck, you know, century love story. He crossed he crossed oceans of time for her. Yeah, yeah, he did. Gary Oldman said that he took this role primarily because a he wanted to be in a Coppola movie and also he wanted to get to say that line. Really. So that's like the two reasons why it's, it's a good I mean, it's, a, it's a good line it's a good line uh, it's, it, it, it appears in the novel so yeah um but it, it was just a weird turn because this whole time he's vlad the impaler right he's killed thousands of people yeah. and then he goes against the church whatever i don't really have a problem with that um but then he's like feeding on uh, you know how many thousands of people did he kill in the 400 years that he was you know dracula up until the beginning of the story and then he's uh feeding off of mina's friend and he's killed people and, and then he's trying to turn her into a vampire so and then I, i'm supposed I, to feel sorry for him at the I, end i think why you feel sorry for him is not that you feel sorry for him per se but you do know that he's like a prisoner now of this curse where he has of his own doing of his own doing in a way uh so, you know, so he has to. But I think what builds sympathy for him is the victims that you see in the movie. Like, Lucy's a victim of his. And she kind of has a very painful existence until she becomes that badass vampire character. Mm-hmm. And then gets her head cut off. You know, so I think the pity comes from his victim. So you see that, oh, this is how he's also a victim, you know. Um, I don't really subscribe to that like you, I guess. But I think that was the intention, it is was, that he, he he's enslaved by two things. His the love of his life killed him, killed herself, and he's been searching for this. But he's also got a bloodlust that he has he has to kill. Yeah. Um. I, I I do think though at the end it it is touching. It's just weird to me that it's touching, you know, at the the end scene where the roles were reversed. Right in the beginning of the movie. She was dead on the floor, and he was caressing her, very yeah. similar to Gustav Klimt's *The Kiss*, which we just, you know, discussed earlier. And now in this role, she, uh, he's dead, and she's kind of caressing him. And and then, what's really weird to me is, it seems what they're saying is that now with the curse lifted, he goes to heaven. Yeah. Is that I what mean, you is that what you I, got from it? No, I don't think he goes to heaven. I think he just dies. But he's looking towards the heavens. 
I, I, I think it's a, up to your own interpretation, but I do think that he just dies. That and that's and that's what that's because, how I would interpret it. But I think that they wanted you to see it as him going up to heaven because I, I was reading some of the uh you know, like the plot line or whatever, and somebody it, it's it's stated in there that you know the curse lift that he can be reunited with his wife. Where's his wife? Oh, actually, his wife killed herself, and by Christianity rules, you kill yourself, you can't go to heaven, right? Uh, I think by some Christian. Well, that but that's what the priest says in the beginning. She killed herself, yeah. so she cannot be going to heaven, and that's why he goes crazy. Yeah, I don't know. So he's in hell. Maybe it's a different god. Maybe in this world, it's not actually a Christian god. Maybe it's just a god that forgives thousands of victims. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so that that was a movie, and yeah. you know, I, I, I don't I don't know if I did you know a good job you know uh, talking about it, but it, if you haven't seen this movie, you should definitely definitely see this movie. It, it is a great movie. Yeah, I I, I think I, I can see why it was very weird in its time, and there's still some things like oh, it's very much a movie of its time too, right? It's seen you know it uses tech it's just it. Movies aren't made this way anymore. It's a big spectacle kind of movie. Um, but I can see why it wasn't accepted in its time. I can see why it would be more accepted now. Um, yeah. And so I, I think people do owe it to themselves to correct the mistake of not seeing it. Warning, though, the movie is incredibly... Uh, what would you... I mean, it's it's full of... It's, it's full of rape. And yeah, tr- trigger warnings for sure. And blood. I mean, obviously, obviously the blood part. But it's a graphic movie. And it's it's really good. I, I thought it was really good. Um, so so there's some some parts uh, like some of these visuals and some of the scenes that I just wanted to make sure I talked about. The one is when Keanu first gets to the castle, or you know his first day or whatever, and he's shaving. Yeah. And then Dracula comes in and helps him shave, and then he cuts himself, and he turns around and licks that razor blade. Oh, man. <laughs> like, first time I saw that, I remember thinking, Jesus Christ, this is a monster. Yeah. Like, because to me, it looks like he doesn't even care about the the actual razor edge of it. Why would he? Yeah, you know, he just cuts yeah. himself. On, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, that seems pretty creepy. And another thing, you were talking about the joke, that, yeah. that joke that we were talking about earlier. Well, there's a couple of jokes. Like uh, when Jonathan first gets to the castle, he's like, you know, you have good taste. You're a man <laughs> of good taste. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a really campy vibe. So you first start seeing it, you're like, okay, what what's going on here? Yeah. And But the thing is, maybe I didn't see it as a joke because I was so focused on Keanu Reeves' bad acting. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Anthony Hopkins delivers a joke, and it's like, I, I read that as a joke. Keanu Reeves, those jokes, like, man, this guy can't even read his fucking lines. This is cringy right here. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that, uh, when I was watching the, um, the, the director's commentary, sorry, I didn't realize that Dracula was the coach driver that, that picked up Keanu. I didn't realize it either. Yeah, so he was the coach driver, and so you, you remember that weird... Where he he reaches out. Oh man, that was wait. I mean, I forgot about that scene because the movie's pretty long. Yeah. But the oh, coach driver. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The coach driver. The costume for that was great. I'm telling you, man. It's... Yeah. And it was creepy. It was, he had like a bird. It was like a crow's foot. It was just wild. And so that that effect was was awesome too because it was done in one take. Or yeah. Not one. You know, I'm sure they did multiple takes, but. You know, they didn't. There was no cuts, so like yeah. they had the the person who was playing the coach driver like on a, a dolly or something like that, and then when he was reaching out, he just they just moved it with him, yeah, and then moved it back, and so like stuff like that nowadays would just be CGI or some other thing, and they did it in camera, yeah, you know, that way, and uh, actually the the guy who was doing a lot of that was Coppola's son, Ron hmm. Coppola, so he hired. He had a bunch of people um, in the beginning who kept telling him, no, we can't do this. You have to do CGI or you have to do some other way besides in in um, in camera optics. And he's like, no, this is what I want. They kept telling him no. So he fired them and, and hired his son. 
So that, nepotism at its best. But it came out it was, pretty good, man. It was a good decision. Yeah, it was a great decision. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, were there, what do you think was uh, your favorite scene of the movie? Well, I mean, <clears throat> the first 15 minutes are pretty incredible. Um, I feel like it's a little bit of a cop out to say the first 15 minutes. But um, I don't know, man. I, I think the chase at the end with the carriage ride, that was like such a fever dream kind of feeling. It was so chaotic. Yeah. Um, that was That's... like, because it, it's like Dracula knows Mina's around, right? And so things just, you know, the stakes get up a little bit, right? Anthony Hopkins is by himself with, with Mina. And so you keep cutting from these scenes where it's like the cowboy and the doctor and them are chasing the carriage. And at the same time, Anthony Hopkins is kind of in danger. I mean, Van Helsing is kind of in danger. Mina's in danger. Everyone chasing Dracula's in danger. Dracula. I mean, it's just like everybody <laughs> in everybody in that moment is in danger. So you're kind of feeling this intense kind of stress uh, with all of them. And the, a lot of the camera stuff, to me, I was just really... I was kind of enthralled by it because it, it, chase scenes are usually pretty boring in movies. And this is a fucking horse drawn carriage chase. Very likely to be boring. Not boring at all. Yeah, that, that's a cool thing. In, in horror movies, you don't get a lot of it. Like, because this isn't an a, a action horror movie, there are some of those. Um, so there aren't a lot of action horror movies, but or this particular movie is in an actual horror movie, but you get an action scene at the end. Yeah. Which you're like, blood is pumping. You're like, holy shit, what's going to happen? It's, it's so good. But so the, you're saying, but, but the weird uh, thing too, is that you, I mean, I, I guess in the early two thousands, they tried to do Van Helsing as an action horror kind of character. You can see how Dracula could become many different genres of movie. You can see, how you can latch on to a certain character. If you latch on to Dracula as a main character, it's a horror movie. If you latch on a Van Helsing as a character, you can turn it into an action movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and they tried to do it. It was bad, but they did it. So yeah, I never saw it. it well, I, I remember watching it. You know, you back when you rented movies, you just buy a bunch. Of, you just rent a bunch of DVDs. You turn one on in the, in the background and then furiously masturbate to Mario Kart. P- Princess Peach. <laughs> Toadstool. Okay. Uh, all right. So my favorite part, b- besides the, the beginning, you see that beginning and you know you're in for something. You know yeah. you're in for a ride. You know that you're in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. And you could just kind of, you know, just let go and just just enjoy it. But uh, besides that scene, I think um, it's going to have to be – Lucy's return. Yeah, that was a good scene too. I mean, the, yeah, it's it's just amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I like it's so creepy. It as a horror fan who's seen, you know, who's been watching horror, you know, my whole life, not a lot of stuff creeps me out anymore. Yeah, that creeped me out. I, I gotta say, it's just yeah. visual. It's nice seeing horror with a huge budget, you know what I mean? Like this is like a set piece time, you know, uh, a period piece. Yeah. Um, movie. And it's got Francis Ford Coppola and it's in like the budget is very high. Uh, it's so it's very like, high. And, and Coppola put the majority of his budget into the costumes. And the, I mean, everything, everything, I was going to say everything about the style of the movie to like the choice to have the, uh, is there like, is there any mythology around the glass casket? I don't know, is that part? I don't know. I, I don't know. But if it was a choice on the director's part to put her in a glass casket, interesting choice. You know, like a cool visual. Um, the visual, I mean, everything about it was great. I, I'm glad that he had the money to do whatever the fuck he wanted because Dracula with that haircut, you know, in the very beginning, <laughs> with the it's, not, it's not what you think of as Dracula, right? But it is iconic as Dracula now. Um, and it it birthed another iconic Dracula in animation form. Monty Dracula. Burns, right? From the yeah, Simpsons. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna say the Simpsons Dracula. Uh, 
But it must have come out. I mean, that then that Treehouse of Horror must have been 92 or 93. Right? It was an early Treehouse of Horror. Yeah, it had to be like 93, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um, so, uh, question for you. Why why do you think it is that you didn't watch this movie? Did you? Are you not a vampire fan? You're not a Coppola fan? Did it just pass you by? No, I mean, I was real young when it came out. Right? But, but you've seen, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, but I think the movie's just too horny. I mean, but you didn't I, know it was horny. Go no, on. no, but 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 I think everyone around me as a child knew. You know what I mean? Uh, the older people around me knew that I was just like that's a very horny movie. Um, yeah. I I don't know. I, I vaguely remember it being on TV. You know, yeah. like in clips, significantly less horny. But I feel like it just felt goofy, right? When I saw the costumes as a kid, it felt goofy, you know, not scary. Now that I'm an adult, I say it's not that it's not scary. It's just that it was too highfalutin for me at the time as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's and probably you think why. You, you brought that into, like, teenager, early adulthood? Yeah, I mean, you just forget about it. There's no, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's what I was saying, yeah, because this movie just, not a lot of people talk about it, you know? Yeah. Um, we watched, we were a couple of years ago, Nina made the uh, Nosferatu shadow in our, in our window for Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. So great. we, so we watched Nosferatu, which is good, which, which is good, but it's not great. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's great in its own way, but, uh, you know, that as, you know, thank God that imagery of Dracula didn't prevail, you know, um, like the rat like monster sort of thing. It feels like the Bell, yeah. It feels like the Bella Lugosi Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula is very much based on that kind of a dandy, right? Kind of very into style. Bella Lugosi, mm-hmm. he's got, he's down to like the, the fucking chain and vest, sharp dresser, right? Yeah. Bram Stoker's Dracula, he's a sharp dresser because he's a fucking weirdo. He's lived for hundreds of years. You know what I mean? You know, he's yeah. tired. He's tired of this shit. Um, so. I'm glad that I'm glad that the Nosferatu vision of Dracula didn't prevail. That this seems to be more of a Bela Lugosi Dracula, only in the sense that the dapper dresser, a right? unique dresser. Yeah. Kate. All right. So, uh, all right. So, what do you rate the movie? Let's say out of five upside down crosses. Okay. I hate rating systems. Okay. I know some yeah. people love rating stuff like, oh, it was like a 4.8 in my scale. I don't know what that means. Andrew, you're on my I, show. I love the movie. I loved it. Is it my favorite movie ever? No. Okay. So let me ask you about your scale here. I go more in scale like one, I hated it. Three, meh. Five, loved it. Everything in between is just like me trying to be too goofy. Five upside down crosses. Because I loved it. That, that that's I just want everyone to know it's like it's not a scientific system. Yeah, of course not. Like for me, if I enjoy the movie, I don't care how how badly people think it is. I'm gonna give it five stars. If if, if I loved it, you know, if yeah. I absolutely love it, if I would sit down and rewatch it one, a couple times a year, I'm gonna give it a five stars. Yeah. You know, I don't care. So, uh, a good um, example of that is Samurai Cop. Have you ever seen Samurai Cop? I know no. it's not a horror movie, but no. Yeah. Okay, whatever. You just uh, watched it, right? Yeah, I just watched it. There was a secret screening of it, and I won't say where because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. And I went with somebody who had never seen it before, and they gave it a one star. But they were laughing the whole entire time. So a one star movie to me doesn't seem like you enjoyed it at all. A one star, a one star movie is something you don't even think about. It's, it's, you know what I mean? It's like. One star movie is I'm bored. I want to get out of here, and I never want to talk about this movie. I had nothing coming out of this movie. You got to give it at least a star if it made you laugh at how bad it was. Yeah, if yeah. you're laughing the whole time, anyway. Right. So with with that in mind, you say you say five. Is that what you said? Yeah, but you have to realize I'm more of a Siskel and Ebert kind of raider where it's I liked it, I didn't like it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. It was a thumbs up. So you liked the Netflix scale. The, the Netflix rating system, thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't rate, I, I don't rate anything on any app except what for about Letterboxd. Letterboxd. Yeah, okay. right, right. 
But okay. but Letterbox isn't trying to sell me more movies, right? Netflix wants me to watch some bullshit. I don't I don't rate anything. You you know Netflix doesn't sell you movies, right? Well, they, they they sell me my attention. They're trying to buy attention from me. Okay. Um, I am going to. You know what? I'm gonna agree with you. Five out of five upside down crosses. It was good, man. It was good. That and, that, that doesn't match my letterbox because my letterbox is like three and a half. Yeah, but if you, <laughs> but if you look at my le- if you look at my letterbox, it makes no sense. It makes no sense to me. It's like I don't know. I don't want to overthink it. You know what I mean? I, I'm yeah, it's not also one of those... just depends on how you're feeling the day you re- you watch the movie. Right. Like I have seen movies like a couple times, and it, I'll give it a three and a half, and then a year later I'll watch it again and I'll give it a four, or I'll give it less. You know, yeah. it just depends. But I, I'm gonna say uh, five out of five upside down crosses. So vampire movies. Let me ask you this: mm-hmm. What other vampire movies have you seen? I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure you've seen a lot, but I'm saying ones that stand out as being like good vampire movies. Vamp? Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen Vamp? No. Mid, uh, mid-80s mid with Grace Jones? Mm. I don't know um, jack shit, bro. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to tell you my, my, I'm gonna tell you the most recent one that I saw, which was really interesting. Um, I think it was like in 2016 or 2015 I saw it. Look it up. The Transfiguration. Have Transfiguration. I have, I've heard of it. I have not seen it, no. I, you know, I'm trying to think. Like, is, it, is it a vampire movie? Yeah, it is a you know, look it up. It's an interesting movie. That's the oh, uh, a girl walks home alone at night. Oh yeah, amazing. Yeah, okay. Amazing. Uh, let the right one in. Amazing. Let the right one in. Yeah, that's that's. Wait, no, hold on. No, okay, but what about the one that's a funny one? <laughs> like, a it has one. Uh, yeah, it's a comedy vampire one. It has those New Zealanders in it. Oh, what we do in the shadows. Right. Okay. Yeah. What that, about that's another great one. Okay, so but let me ask you this. You did see a vampire movie pretty recently, a couple of years ago. What's it called? It's the Jim Jarmusch one. Remember? It's the one that that we hated. You and I hated. Oh, uh, only lovers left alive. Yeah. The reason wait, so Miguel you used to run this whole like the watching the movies together, everyone would vote. I voted for this Only Lovers Left Alive because I thought it was Left the Right. I mean, no, not the Left Right. Uh, what We Do in Shadows. I thought it was What We Do in Shadows, so I voted for it. Get there, watch this. Oh my God, it was bad. This, I have never walked out of a movie. I was about to walk out of my own home with this movie. I, I'm not against Jim Jarmusch. I like Jim Jarmusch movies, but I just thought this was a little, a little lame. It, um, it was so cringy. It was so smug. D- it takes place in uh, Detroit. We're, we're about, it takes place in Detroit. Not a black person in sight. Uh, They're really into music, right? But they they only mention like the white stripes. They only mention the white stripes. The, the white stripes in in the Motor City. Yeah, it's um, that movie was insufferable. Is, was, is the only was, word I could say. It was a little nutty. And we actually cut it off about halfway through because the whole crowd was like, nah. It might have been 75% of the way. I don't like getting – I don't like ending movies. I don't like ending things too early. I, I've done it before, but I don't like yeah. to. Yeah, I think I, the only movie I walked out of in my life was Ladder 49. Oh, wow. Is that a 9-11 tribute movie or something? So I used to sneak into movies all the time when I was a kid. And so we'd basically sneak into what I mean. We got better at it to where we'd know what theater we're sneaking into to see what movie we wanted to see. But we used to sneak into movies, and then we ended up <laughs> sneaking into Ladder 49. And about 20 minutes into this movie, me and my friends was like, "Let's get the, f- let's leave this movie we didn't even pay for." And the funny thing is, as we left, we're booing it. It's like a fun- <laughs> funeral scene. Jeez. You could tell everybody in that fucking theater was either a fucking firefighter or a cop. We ruined their night. Oh, man. It was great. It was terrible. Uh, Awful movie. All right, Andrew. So you've uh, confessed to your sin. Uh, yes, Father. The movie. Yes, Father. Am I going to heaven? Am I going to die? Uh, there is no heaven or hell. Don't no, touch me. It's, it's just. Stop, it's touching just me. Stop touching me, Father. <laughs> we are, just so everybody knows, we are recording this in our own separate homes. I am not touching Andrew. Uh, the next step is absolution. 
I will now absolve you of your horror sin. Now, you have to go ahead and do the homework that I assigned to you. Uh, and that is to watch three horror movies. Okay. And these movies are Vamp. Okay. A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. Okay. And The Hunger. Okay. Your sin will not be forgiven until you watch these three movies and report back. And I'd love to have you back on the show to talk about it and something else. Okay, so here's the thing. We are recording our own, home, our own homes, but we're playing by the Dracula movie rules, which means that you are actually touching me through your vapors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, that's the other thing. What were his powers? His powers were anything. He, hey. he could do anything. But he had weaknesses, you know, like his throat. <laughs> so I don't know. I was. He could. Uh, he please was, stop touching me. <laughs> he was controlling weather. It was really weird. Yeah. Anyway, he, it was a good movie. I loved it. I will watch this movie: A Vamp, The Hunger, and A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. Yep. And then come back and report on it. I'll report. I, I, I'm, I'm going to give them grades. Did I like them or did I not like them? All right, Andrew, thanks for coming on the inaugural episode of My Horror Confessional, and I hope to have you back again sometime. Well, thank you for having me. And just please say hi to your dogs, um, Cuckoo and Chamoy. Chewy and, Chewy and Chente. That was Ch- close, though. Chamoy and Cuckoo. Yeah. Uh, and Andrew, uh, if, if the people want to follow you or contact with you or get any of your books, how can they do that? You can follow me on Twitter at a Hilbert 3000, all capital letters, although it doesn't matter on Twitter. You can also go to 5GKilledGod.com. That's 5, the number 5, GKilledGod.com to buy my books. And I am Miguel underscore Myers underscore ATX on Instagram and also on Twitter. Follow me on there and we'll, we'll talk to you soon.